Hello and welcome to my Bitcoin for Beginners tutorial. Now in this video tutorial I'm going to cover what Bitcoin is, how to mine it, and some tips and tricks that you can use to make more money mining Bitcoin. I just want to start off by saying if you want to skip the tutorial, everything that I'm going to talk about is in the video description and, and is labeled accordingly. So you can just click on the video description, download the mining software, click on the link to view a calculator and try and figure out how much money you'll make per week or per month and, and kind of just run with this stuff on your own. But if you want to watch the tutorial, let's begin. So the first thing that I want to touch on is what Bitcoin is. Bitcoin is a new online digital currency. It's been around since about 2009, but just recently has gained a lot of popularity. And now today, one Bitcoin is worth $116. Now you might be asking yourself, well, I don't understand. Why is a Bitcoin worth so much? What is a Bitcoin? Now a Bitcoin really isn't anything. It doesn't represent anything other than a number. Now you might be wondering, well, how do I get a Bitcoin? You can get a Bitcoin a number of different ways. You can exchange your local currency, like US dollars, for example, or you can allow your computer to mine. And mining is a process, essentially, that just uses your computer to solve mathematical problems, and you are rewarded when you solve these problems with a service fee. And those service fees, while small, add up, especially depending on how fast your computer is. And now there are people out there that make hundreds and thousands of dollars mining Bitcoin. So you might say, well, I've heard that Bitcoin is a scam. Or I've heard that Bitcoin is a Ponzi scheme. Well, not really. Essentially what's happening here is that we're allowing the Bitcoin network, which is a Napster-like peer-to-peer network, to use our computer to process information. And so every time our computer is processing information it's allowing the entire financial network to operate so when people want to send and receive bitcoins they need computers to process that information in order to make that transaction so just to give you an example like bank of america or chase or wells fargo all of these really big banks they have skyscraper upon skyscraper of buildings and computers and servers to allow their entire financial network to run. So Bitcoin harnesses the internet and all of the computers on the internet in order to process all of these transactions. And that's why it's not a scam or a Ponzi scheme. Now the price of a Bitcoin may be inflated. And by the time you watch this video, the price of a Bitcoin may be more than $116 or less than $116. So let's get started. The first thing that I want to show you is the Bitcoin wallet. Now, I'll provide the download link to download the Bitcoin wallet. Go ahead and download and install the Bitcoin wallet. I'll open it up for you just to show you what it looks like. It's already running, and here it is. It's a very, very simple program. It doesn't do much. Here's my overview. You can see I've received three transactions recently. And so once you download the Bitcoin wallet and run it, it will attempt to sync with the entire network and you'll see a little progress bar down here at the bottom and it will begin to sync now go ahead leave it alone let it sync there's nothing that we're going to do with this right now but we need it for later in the video tutorial so after we download the Bitcoin wallet we're going to have to download a miner program now there are a number of different mining programs out there CG miner BF miner these require a little bit more background knowledge and so I wouldn't recommend them for the beginner so go ahead and download GUI miner you can find the download link in this video's description once you download GUI miner run the miner and you will see something similar to this screen now you probably won't have all of these tabs um, but all we need to do is click on File, New Miner, Open CL Miner, and we're going to give this new miner a name. So you can name this whatever you'd like. I'll call this Test Miner for Beginners. Great. And that will show us a screen similar to this. But we don't have a username and we don't have a password. And the server is the pool that we're going to join and that brings me to my next point well what's a pool well a pool is basically 
a collective pool, a collective network of computers that are all working together to solve blocks of information to receive Bitcoin. Now there are a number of different pools out there. This is a really good chart of the pools that are currently available. BTC Guild is the largest pool, followed by, I believe, BitMinter and 50BTC, which are uh, looks like they're equal at 16%. I'm going to show you Slush's pool, and the reason why I'm going to show you Slush's pool is because I've had really good success with Slush's pool. I've tried Elugis, which um, just wasn't working out for me. I wasn't really uh, making much progress. BTC Guild, for some reason, I was making zero progress. I'm not sure if I had everything set up correctly. BitMinter is pretty popular. DeepBit is popular. But I'm going to show you Slush Pool. So the first thing that we need to do now is join a pool. So to join Slush Pool, we're going to type in this website here. Mining dot bitcoin dot cz and that'll bring you to just uh, slushes pools main website we can click here to sign up it's totally free all you need is an email you create a password once you create an account you'll be brought to a screen right here now you can see here bitcoin address that is something that we're going to get from our wallet so let's go back to our bitcoin wallet and let's go click on receive coins and we're going to click on new address and we're going to give that new address a label so I'll give that uh, let's see slush pool for beginners address so once I do that you can see it pops up here in this list and what I want to do is right click copy that address the string of code right here and I'm just going to paste it right here. I'm just going to paste that address there. And so we're going to keep the send threshold at 0.01. These are just some statistics that will show you uh, basically where you're at in mining. We're going to save these settings. Now we need to create a worker. So we've already figured out how we're going to get paid. Now we need to create a worker. And this is kind of like a login and password information. So we're going to register a new worker, and we're going to give this worker a name. It can be anything that you want. I'll just type in beginner. I'm going to give it a password. I suggest just something simple. One, two, three will work. Leave everything else the same. Click on save. And you'll see here that it will create your worker. Now, this is what we need to copy. Copy. Go back to our miner. And now we're going to paste the worker username. See, I'm under that miner that I just created. I'm going to paste the username. The password was 123. And the server is the pool. And so you can see there are a bunch of pools, but I'm showing you Slush's pool. So I'll select Slush's pool. And next to device. This is where we can see which device we'll be using. We have my Intel i7 processor and then we also have our graphics card processor you want to select your graphics card processor that's about a hundred times faster than just your standard computers CPU CPU affinity I'm just going to keep that at zero and all we need to do is click this button boom start mining now we're going to also click on view show summary and that's going to actually show us a nice little summary of all of the activity in our mining program and all of our workers that are mining. So you can see here, uh, test miner for beginners. I have it mining. Um, the only reason why it's only at 2.1 is because I'm already using all of my CPU power in my previous miner. So I'm just going to stop that. And so you can see here, I'm mining at 131 mega hashes per second. Uh, and I've only started this up within the last five minutes. I'm already up to 110 shares that have been accepted and I have zero stales. Now this number here, this column, what this represents is a count of the number of times that you were given a bit of information for your computer to solve and your computer solved it and sent in the answer and your answer was confirmed as correct and accepted and so you get a share under accepted. Now if 
you have any numbers in this column under stale, basically what that means is that you were given some information to solve, you solved it, you sent it in, but you sent it in too late. Or you sent it in and it was wrong. So you'll have a number under this column and that won't be counted towards your payout. So every time you get an accepted share, you get paid. Now, that's really all we need to do. Now, your computer is mining. Um, so the next thing that you should do is let's try and figure out how much money we're going to make with this speed. And so how we do that is we use a calculator, a Bitcoin mining calculator. So I'm going to take this number here, 130 mega hashes per second, and I'm going to go to this Bitcoin calculator that I found that I like. That's great. So I'm also going to include this link in the uh, video description. Go ahead and click on it. And this is a Bitcoin mining calculator. It's great. So we can enter in our mega hashes per second, which is 130. You're probably going to have a different number. It may be higher. It may be lower. And this is where we're going to enter how many watts our computer is using. So I have um, an 800 or an 850 power supply in my computer. Now, whether my computer is using all of that power or not uh, is debatable. I don't think it is. So I'm, you know, I'll just put 400, 425. I'll split the difference. Whoops. 425 at 130. Um, and your cost per kilowatt. Now, this is the cost of electricity where you live. Now, if you're not sure where, or if you're not sure how much uh, the cost per kilowatt is, you can always Google that. So let's just say that it's 12 cents per kilowatt. Let's just say I didn't have to spend anything. I'm just using my normal desktop computer. And let's just run this thing for a month. Now, today, Bitcoin is worth $116. We'll keep the difficulty, just whatever it says, because that'll change. Uh, and the difficulty percent per month, I'm actually just going to keep that at 1. And this is 25, which is correct. And I'll just click on Calculate. And let's see how much I'll make. Well, it looks like here that in 24 hours, I'm actually going to make $0.68. Cents but it's going to cost me a dollar and 22 cents in power. So that's a net loss of 54 cents. So it looks like in 24 hours, one month, one year, 30 days, one month, I'm going to lose $16 because I'm going to have to pay $36 in electricity bill. So this will give you an idea of if you're going to make any money or not. Um, so then the question is, well, how, what do I have to do in order to make money? Well, the answer is your mega hashes per second, this number here, needs to be higher. Needs to be higher than the amount of money that you need to spend on electricity. So you need to make more Bitcoin than it costs to run your computer. So let me just give you an example. Some people are making 3,000 mega hashes per second, which equates to 3 giga hashes. So 3,000 mega hashes per second, let's just say, um, and, and actually this number right here is probably wrong, my computer probably doesn't take 425 watts, let's, but let's, for this example, let's just keep 425 watts, 3,000 mega hashes per second, let's say the cost of electricity is a little bit higher, let's say it's 0 0.18 uh, per kilowatt hour, uh, cost of hardware, let's just say it costs me $500, Maybe I had to buy a new graphics card. Time frame, 30 days. I'm going to bump that up to 90, three months. Keep all those settings the same. Calculate. So you can see here that in 90 days, three months, after spending $500, I would have made $1,239. I mean, that's pretty good. Now, these numbers obviously will change depending on what your computer specs are, how much power you'll be using. But that'll give you just a general ballpark idea um, as to how much money you can make with your computer. So just to quickly answer any question that you might have, in order to get this number higher, this mega hash per second, we need a faster graphics card. And so a really good website that I've found is this one here. Um, it will basically compare all of the graphics cards that are out on the market today. So we can scroll down here. 
a little bit and so it'll give you AMD ATI Radeon graphics cards here is the model number and it will tell you the mega hashes so you can kind of guesstimate what your mega hash number will be based on which graphics card you have or which graphics card you want to purchase now mind you you can plug in more than one graphics card to your computer but in order to, in order to do that you need to make sure that you have enough power to do that so let's just say you had two 5970s running at 704 mega hashes per second times two that's 1408 so we could go back to the calculator we could put in 1408 uh, just bump keep that at 425 this is just all guessing right here I don't know what your numbers will be but you can see here that in one year thousand four ninety uh, four in one month or I'm sorry 90 days so just these are just some resources for you to check out and uh, kind of experiment with all in all after watching this video you should have been able to at least uh, set up your wallet set up your mining software set up your worker and connect to a pool which then you would be able to start mining and you'd be able to figure out what your mega hash per second rate is. So that's it. That concludes the Bitcoin for Beginners tutorial. Let us know what your mega hash per second is. Let us know what you're working with. Or if you have any questions, leave that information in the comments section below. Thank you so much for watching and good luck.